Here are three disturbing shower stories that may have you second guess taking a shower home alone, or maybe with someone else in the house. We wanted to make this super creepy, so we suggest you take a shower before watching the video. I've been in prison for several months now. I wouldn't like to say who I am or what got me incarcerated, but I need to say what's happened to me since I've been in here. From day one, I started pumping iron every chance I could get in the courtyard. It was partially out of boredom, but more so that I would look stronger and tougher, in the hopes that it would keep other inmates from trying to start trouble with me. For the most part, it worked. I never had any fights or anything weird happen between me and anyone else. Well, except for this one guy. I could have pumped iron ten times a day for ten years and I never would have gotten as big as him, bulk-wise, height-wise, or otherwise. His name was Butch, and nobody messed with Butch. But I quickly found out that Butch messed with whoever he wanted to. I thought I was safe for a while, but sometimes I would catch Butch staring at me funny and intentionally hogging the weights. That way I would have to talk to him. In those cases, I would forget about working out and go somewhere else. That was when the trouble started for me. Butch cut into the lunch line right behind me. <gasps> Nobody made a sound to say they cared in any way. He stared at me the entire time we were getting our tray served up, and then followed me to where I was sitting. As soon as I sat down, he leaned over me and stole my tray, and walked away with it like it was his to begin with. I wasn't about to go and try to get it back from mine. Maybe I should have stood up for myself. I don't know. But after that is when I started to feel like Butch was on my back at all times. Every time I hit the showers, I had to watch out for him. He was tall enough to see over everyone and over any dividers that were in there. And I could always see him looking at me with this creepy smile on his face. Soon enough, he started coming up to me in the showers. Hey, look. I dropped my soap. Why don't you do Big Butch a favor and pick that up for me? It's just a bar of soap, man. You can get another one. Not till tomorrow. Now come on! Pick up the bar of soap so I can clean my eggplant! You don't want to use the soap off of the floor. Look, there's my soap right there on the shelf. You can use that one. Reluctantly, I picked up my bar of soap off the shelf and dropped it in his hands. It was certainly better than bending over. But right away, he grabbed my wrist and pulled me closer to him, wrapping both of his hands around mine. Hmm. You've got soft hands, like a lady. I'm gonna call you Charmin. I'm sure you could come up with a better name than that. Don't piss me off, Charmin. Or you'll see why they call me Big Butch. Finally, he let go of me and walked away. I was relieved, but only slightly. I knew this wasn't the end of things. And I also knew that at least a dozen other inmates from my cell block had been in the showers. They'd seen and heard that whole thing go down. My reputation, if I ever had any, was in jeopardy now. However... That seemed to be the least of my worries, judging by the way almost all of them had <gasps> fled the showers as soon as Butch started talking to me. The next morning, Butch came to my cell with another guy covered in gang tattoos. He flashed a look at my cellmate, and with one jerk of his thumb, told him to get the hell out. Good morning, Charmin. That's not my name. It's actually- Charmin! That's your name! I noticed you ain't got no ink! Gotta have ink in this place or you're a nobody! Wow, that's really how it works? His buddy took out a bunch of makeshift prison tattoo equipment from under his shirt, and he immediately got to work tattooing my forearm. I had never gotten a tattoo before, and this prison method was certainly as painful as it was unsanitary. However, about halfway through, I had a horrible realization. The tattoo read, Butch's Charmin. I was completely horrified. That's when the pair left my cell, with my dignity along with them. Later that night, I tried to sneak into the shower so nobody would follow me in, but that was the biggest mistake of my life. I should have gone while it was packed full of people, but I wasn't thinking straight. I'd spent the whole day freaking out over this awful tattoo on my arm, and all I wanted to do was wipe it off or cut it out of my skin if I had to. I wasn't 30 seconds into my shower before Butch came in. We were the only ones in there. Every other shower was open, but he took the one right next to me. He pulled out a bar of soap, the same one I'd given him yesterday, and immediately let it slip out of his hands onto the floor. It floated across the water and stopped at my foot. Ain't you gonna pick that up? I can give you mine again. I reached for my shower kit, a little box with all my toiletries in it. But as soon as I picked it up, Butch slapped it out of my hands. Everything in it went flying across the room. I want my soap, and I want you to pick it up! I looked around everywhere. There was nobody. No other option. I decided I should just do it as quickly as possible. Then it would be alright. So, I bent down, and then... Ah! The next day, 
I made my way to the food court, except I was walking to the lineup with Butch while holding his pocket. That's when the grim reality hit me, knowing that I now belonged to Butch and there was nothing I could do about it. I lived on the streets for a long time. I panhandled around town and would usually make enough to get at least one hot meal each day. Afterwards, I'd go home, or at least under a bridge of what I called home, and hung out with a good friend of mine who we'll call Paul. Paul and I never saw each other in the day because we went to different parts of town to avoid stepping on each other's chops. Hey, Manny, that was work. It was good. Made enough to get me a foot long at Subway. What, you couldn't save some? I haven't eaten anything except for the dumpster food on King Street all day. <laughs> well, panhandle better. And you need to take a shower. A few weeks ago, we found this old abandoned shack near the bridge. The shack was in pretty bad shape. It was completely scorched, like there'd been a big fire that almost burnt the place down. Nobody lived in it anymore, but it was good enough for squatting. Paul and I never considered sleeping in there, as we didn't want to compromise our health by breathing in burnt debris all day. But even though the shack had no electricity, it did, however, have running water. That meant that the shower was still working. Paul and I would take turns taking showers to despite the house being dark as hell. There was a window in the bathroom that let in just enough light to be able to do what we had to do. One night, I got home to the bridge pretty late, and Paul wasn't there. He was always there when I got back, especially at that hour. I found it very unusual, so I went looking for him, first checking the shower shack. I could hear the water running from the front door, so I went to check the bathroom. I peeked down the hallway, and there he was, standing in the shower with all of his clothes on. There was a wild look look on his face, like he'd been possessed by something crazy. Paul, what the hell are you doing? You're gonna freeze to death. I'm dirty, I'm dirty, I'm dirty. I need to be clean. But why are you showering with your clothes on? Leave me alone. Don't come near me. I'm very dirty. All right, I'll leave. I'll just see you later, okay? I backpedaled out of the bathroom and waited around the corner. I was worried about him and had never seen him like that. I decided to wait for him to finish showering, peeking around the corner every now and then. But the thing that really scared me was he never stopped. He just kept scrubbing himself madly, exactly like the crazies do, but worse than I'd ever seen. Just scratching and rubbing himself all over, constantly, and the whole time he was talking to himself. I need to be clean. I'm so dirty. Filthy dirty. Gotta get clean. Clean and pure. I need to be clean. After he wouldn't get out for what must have been an hour, I finally had to ask him. Hey, Paul, did you take anything today? I need to be clean. I'm so dirty. Damn filthy dirty. Gotta get clean. Pure and clean. I need to be clean. To my disappointment, Paul was too far gone. He didn't even know that I was there anymore. I thought about waiting to see if he'd come down from whatever he was on, but deep down, I knew there was nothing I could do. So I went back to the bridge and tried to sleep. The next morning, there was still no Paul, but I figured he had to have left the shack by then. I got up and panhandled a bit, but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. Later that night, I went back to the shack. I headed up the stairs and to the bathroom Room, only to see Paul still there. He was still in the shower, scrubbing himself while yelling, I'm dirty, 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 dirty. Paul, why are you still here? You're already clean. No, Manny, you don't get it. There's something big growing inside me. Bugs crawling through my skin. So many bugs. <laughs> You're just tripping, man. It's all in your head because of whatever you took. Just quit hogging it. I need to shower too. Paul began scrubbing himself at a much faster rate as he yelled, I need to be clean! I was at a loss for words. All I could do was run. I didn't come back for another day as I was scared as hell. The next night, I came back and saw that he was still there, showering his life away. But this time, I wasn't going to try to talk to him. I knew that wasn't going to work. I approached the bathroom slowly, got up next to him, and forcibly began yanking him out of the shower. I tried to drag him out of the bathroom, but he went berserk, pushing me so 
hard that I fell and smacked the ground. Suddenly, I felt dazed and incoherent. I remember seeing Paul standing by the sink, looking into the broken mirror. He was so far gone that his skin was shriveled up like a raisin. He honestly looked like the girl from The Exorcist from the several open wounds scattered across his face. Then I saw it. The bugs. I rubbed my eyes in disbelief at first, but then I saw more of them. They were crawling under his skin. Dozens of them. Maybe even hundreds. All racing towards the open wounds on his skin. And then they started burrowing out. I scrambled up to my feet. I needed to get the hell out of there, but there was so much water on the floor that I slipped as soon as I stood up. I was immediately soaked and remembered witnessing something disturbing happening to Paul. He was twitching, jolting, contorting unnaturally. I felt it. I felt it happening to me. I opened my mouth to scream, only for fingers to squirm out from my throat. Then a hand shoved itself through. An entire arm, reaching up and climbing out of me. And that's the last thing I remember. Last night, the remains of two men were found in the bathroom of this house here behind me, which was abandoned after a fire rendered the structure inhabitable. Neighbors over a quarter mile away complained of strange noises in the night, accompanied by foul odors in the following days. So far, the deceased have yet to be identified, and there seems to be no evidence of the attacker who could have done this. The only lead investigators have is that the former owner of the house, who disappeared after the fire, has been suspected of arson. Police say the owner also happened to be a psychic, and was believed to provide such services to the general public prior to the fire. If there are any witnesses around the general area that would like to come forward, please contact Crime Stop. <laughs> Recently, I tried moving in with my cousin Timmy. He needed a roommate and I needed a place to stay that was close to my college. This was my first time living out of the dorms. And not only was Timmy's house only five minutes away, but he was also willing to let me stay there rent free since we were family, or so I thought. However, I'd never been that close to him even though we were around the same age. My parents recommended that I stay there for a semester or two, until I could find a way to make some money and live on my own. Whenever I was busy working on anything for my classes, Timmy would pester me about hanging out with him, basically begging for attention. Hey Sarah, you want to see this cool new show I found on Netflix? I'm busy, Timmy. I have a lot of homework to get through, maybe later, okay? Aw, but I think you'd really like it. I'm not gonna start it without you, so don't make me wait too long. I'm literally not going to take a TV show more serious than my career. It's not a TV show. It's Netflix and chill. <laughs> Go away! I don't know what his deal was, but he could just never get the hint. I had more important things to do with my life, because my parents weren't going to support me doing nothing forever like his parents seemed to be okay with doing. Of course, despite it being annoying, I did cave in eventually. I couldn't always find excuses to go out or hide in my room all the time. So we started watching this weird show on Netflix that he'd been begging me to watch with him. I couldn't bring myself to pay attention to it very much. It was all really nerdy and with seriously misogynistic undertones. And as much as he said he'd been waiting for me to start it, it was very obvious that he'd already seen the whole thing. He would stare at me the whole time and then tap me on my leg and take my phone out of my hand to try and get me to watch specific, supposedly important parts. You're not watching if you're on your phone. Come on, won't you pay attention to it? For me, I'm sure you'll like it if you give it a chance. <sighs> Okay, fine. I should have known better. He took me agreeing to actually watch it as some kind of signal, I guess. We were sitting on the couch together, and up until then, we'd been a couple feet apart. But after that, he kept scooting closer to me every time I looked at the TV. I could see him out of the corner of my eye. I tried to ignore it, not knowing what else to do. But when he was right up next to me, he tried to put his arm around my shoulders. I was petrified. Obviously, this was awkward. But the worst part, was when he started leaning over onto me, like he was going to rest his head on me. I was wearing a slightly low-cut v-neck shirt that night, so I immediately excused myself to avoid things getting any worse. I, I just realized I haven't taken a shower today. I excuse me. Ah, things were just getting good. I got my clothes and toiletries together as quickly as I could and went inside the bathroom. That's when I realized there was no lock on the door. I figured he wouldn't cross such boundaries, so I got in and started showering. Right when I started shampooing my hair, I heard the door creak, 
I quickly rubbed water over my eyes and saw a silhouette of Timmy on the other side of the curtain. The curtain was translucent, but it was definitely him. I didn't even want to move. But I forced myself to slowly reach over and yank back the shower curtain. But he wasn't there. All I saw was an open door. I closed the curtain and rushed through the rest of my shower. I went to bed early, avoiding saying goodnight to Timmy. I was restless all night, feeling like I was going crazy. However, I did manage to sleep a bit. And when I woke up, the first thing I saw was my bedroom door open. I knew I had closed it. What made things really alarming was how there were no locks on any doors in the house except the ones that led outside so I knew it had to be Timmy that opened it. I left for class early just to get away from him. During lunch, I called my parents and told them about everything that was happening with Timmy, and they agreed that I should pack my bags and get out as soon as possible. They said they would pick me up the next day after they got back in town from their work trip, which meant I would have to spend another night at Timmy's house. I must have looked pretty glum after getting off the phone, as a few of my friends came by and offered to let me stay with them for the night, but I kindly declined. I didn't want to drag any of them into the situation. I stayed in the library until I was done with all of my studying for the day and didn't get home until very late. When I finally got in, I could see Timmy waiting by the front door with an angry look on his face, like that of a toddler who didn't get the toy he wanted. Where have you been? I've been waiting to Netflix and chill with you for hours! Don't you know how worried I've been? Where I've been is none of your business. I'm moving out tomorrow. What? When I told him I was moving out, he got all red in the face and started punching the wall like some unhinged psycho. It was honestly embarrassing as much as it was disturbing. I immediately went to the bathroom to take a shower again. I needed to get away from that weirdo. But just like the previous night, when I was halfway through shampooing my hair, I heard the door creak open. Then, just like before, I saw the silhouette of Timmy standing on the other side. I didn't want to pull back the curtain this time because I could see him moving, inching closer. And I could hear him sniffing, like he was trying to smell me. I stepped back out of fear, trying to think of what to do. I thought that if I shut the water off, that would scare him off. So that's what I did. Unfortunately, it didn't work. I could still see him standing there. And it wasn't long before he started sniffing for me again, louder this time. Then, out of nowhere, he yanked the curtain open. <gasps> you forgot to wash off the soap! <laughs> I jumped out of the shower while pushing him to the side. I grabbed a towel and got the hell out of the house. I showed up on the neighbor's doorstep, covered in nothing but a towel and a bunch of soap, banging on the door and screaming for help. Open the door, please! Somebody help! They ended up calling the cops, and Timmy was immediately arrested. I had a friend stay the night till my parents could come pick me up the next day. Later that night, when I began to pack up my belongings, my friend suggested that we check Timmy's room. I just then realized I had never been in there, and I shortly found out exactly why. There was a shrine in there, dedicated to me. There were pictures of me from all the way back when we were kids, all up until just the night before, of me sleeping in bed, unaware that I was even being photographed.